Welcome to church. We're so glad that you guys are here with us this morning. We're excited to worship in the house of the Lord this morning. Y'all are awake, lost an hour of sleep, still at early service, and you're excited. Amen. Y'all on a roll today. You guys join us as we sing this next song.
Crosspointers, how's everybody doing? Praise the Lord. Y'all are in for a treat today. Uh, I've got one of my best friends in all the world that's here today, and uh, 
I'm excited. I've been looking forward to this and have been asking to come by and we'd love to hear from him. He's going to share a little bit about his ministry. In case you don't know, uh, he's one of our missionaries to Peru that we support and uh, we take trips over there often and we're getting ready to start planning for the 2021 trip. And uh, so maybe you'll want to be a part of that. But uh, he has a children's home there in uh, uh, Senegia, Peru. Uh, he's got a, a school, a Christian school there and a church there. And he's got other churches as well in, in the, in, around the area. And some of you have been there with me and uh, you know all about it. Uh, the first time I went, I left my heart there. And I just looked at those pictures and it just caused me to tear up and think. Over a hundred and some kids that have been adopted out into Christian homes. Totally abandoned children. Yeah, that's, a good, that's, that's something to celebrate. It's a, it's a mission that he has that God has called him to do, and I'm so proud of him, and, and uh, uh, I'm just uh, honored that we get to be a, par, a small part of what you do. So let's give it up for Mike Kendi. Mike, you go ahead and come preach to us this morning and uh, share your heart, whatever God lays on your heart. Thank you, Brother Carl. All right, love you, brother. What a joy it is to be back at Cross Point. I love what you guys have done with this auditorium. Turn around. This is amazing, beautiful. Amen. Nikki and group that sang just a little while ago, thank you so much. I'd rather listen to them sing than I would uh, any of the, all these famous folks out here in the world, because I just, man, I just love to hear them. It just always just touches my heart, and I am blessed to be back here with Brother Carl and and his family and, and all you folks. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love for the Lord, and I just love seeing exciting things going on in our churches. We come back from Peru, and being able to see things like this just excites me, encourages us as missionaries. Don't give up. Stay strong. Stay faithful. Uh, God's just got the best to yet to come, amen? And uh, so anyway, what a, just what a joy it is to see it. So encouraging. My wife and daughter are traveling, uh, so they're not here. Zane will be here in the next service. Our youngest son, he drove up uh, with me. He's over with Sister Peggy uh, this morning. <laughs> and um, then, uh, then uh, hopefully my, uh, one or two of my sons will come down from Liberty and be here in the next service as well. You know they're not going to get up that early to drive here to hear me preach anyway. <laughs> Uh, they're, they're coming probably get some money anyway, I'm sure, but, uh, but yeah, and then our oldest son, Mikey, he finished college at Liberty uh, over Thanksgiving holiday. He was through with all of his requirements to graduate, and he went on what's called a world race, so he's going to 11 countries in 11 months. He left in January, and they ended up changing his schedule. They started in Peru, then he went to uh, Chile, then Argentina. And he'll be going to some, some amazing areas, some of those he can't even talk about online and, and, and do certain posts like we would like to hear about because he can't really say what all they're doing, where they're going. But he is going and just sharing the gospel and one-on-one and -on -one meeting folks and being involved. He met some folks uh, they didn't even know. He just met them, uh, and they had like a, a food truck. So he goes out spends a day just helping them doing the, doing the food truck. But he gets to share Jesus with these folks as he meets them. So uh, say amen. So I'm excited that, uh, that my boy's doing that. Josh will graduate this year, and, uh, and then so much going on in our life, and God's been blessing. We obviously uh, come in uh, for several months each year because uh, we have to. I don't know why that's not wanting to turn for me, but because we have to. Um, but what we're excited about is getting to be able to visit our churches and give a little update. I love that video, Brother Carl. Thank you so much. Or whoever put that together, that was uh, that was a blessing. And uh, anyway, uh, we we have seen several children get adopted. I, I, uh, in just a few uh, months or so, we'll be seeing another brother and sister that have just been placed uh, um, in our children's home. They've been with us a long time, and uh, so the brother is uh, 17. They age out. Normally it's 17 and 18 because you can't get adopted then. This boy has been in our home since he's been a little bitty boy. And now he and his little sister, uh, who is nine now, are going to be adopted to a Christian family just a couple hours from here. Isn't that awesome? That's incredible. <clears throat> so I love seeing just, just the hope and, and just, the, just the reaction when we tell them. Uh, another one, Abel, that many of you know, you know, he was in our children. He's been in our children's home since he was just... Uh, maybe four years old. Uh, of course, he turned 18 this last year, but he was adopted last year, and he lives in Statesville, North Carolina, been with us for all these years. If you've been to Peru, Abel was one of our oldest ones. That boy watched over 100 children get adopted, and he would be at church, and he'd raise his hand and for prayer requests, and he would say, pray that God would send a family for me. 
he had watched that many other children get adopted, but his day came. And that was just awesome. He's doing great. And uh, so anyway, so many. I, I went to Georgia just the other week. We're up around Raleigh, North Carolina while we're in. And Shalene has some family around there as well. So and, and her parents and others, sisters and stuff. So anyway, we, uh, I took a trip. I went from North Carolina to South Carolina and saw a child that was, uh, that was adopted from our home. I went to Georgia, saw several other children that were adopted from our home. Went to Tallahassee, Florida, saw two more children that were adopted from our home. Came back. Just these trips of going around and getting to see these children just really excites me and, and blessing to see how God is working in their life. But I want to tell you something. We could not do it without individuals and churches and Sunday school classes and, and just people like you who, who are giving, who are helping. It would be impossible. Now, let me tell you something. It continues to happen in our life. People are calling us every week. I, the, just two days ago, I got a, got a message, Shalene and I did, from the authorities in Peru asking us, please take in more children. And we had to turn them away. And, and, and that's hard. It really is hard. When you know you have room, our, our, our children's home is amazing. We built a new dorm. We have the space. We have the beds. We have the room. We, we have to, but when we bring in a child, that's a big responsibility financially. Uh, and, 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 and when you bring someone in your home, you, we have to take care of them because the government doesn't help with anything. So for food, for clothes, for medical, for everything, we have to take care of it. So anyway, what we need is folks that are coming alongside and praying and, and going over like you guys do. And, and I know we'll have a group come over next year again as we always have a tremendous time when y'all are there giving out the gospel and sharing. But it also gives a time to be able to invest in these young people's lives. But I just want to ask you something. I brought some brochures. I set them over here, and I'll have them in the back. I don't have one in my Bible here or not. Um, can I just get one of those? Thank you so much. Uh, but these are our brochures, and I know that if you I just need one. Okay, thank you. Uh, these right here are our brochures that we pass out. It just tells a little bit about our children's home. It has a little part at the bottom right here. It's perforated. You can take it apart. You can hand it to me, hand it to uh, Pastor Carl, Miss Kim, or somebody, or send it in. But this 100% uh, goes to the children's home. I don't go places and ask anybody for money for me, except for here. No, I'm just kidding. I don't go anywhere <clears throat> and ask people for money. But on behalf of these children, I learned a long time ago, I'm not going to be able to bring children in unless I let folks know the need. We desperately need some folks, especially with, in these times we're living in. It's just giving has been low, and it's just been hard. And we would love to bring in more children. We've already brought five new children in in these last few months, but we want to bring more in. We want to reach more. So if you would help us and you just pray about it, take one of my brochures here. I'll have them in the back here for the service, but would you just take one and, and pray about it? Pray and ask God what he'd have you to do. He already knows what you have. You don't have to uh, convince God of anything. Let him convince you of something. Just go to God and say, Lord, you know what I have. Tell me what to give. And maybe you could give a one-time gift. Maybe you could sponsor. There is, no, there is no amount that you have to give. I mean, if you send a dollar a month. I have kids that I've known from being a youth pastor and going into church preaches that some little kids come up and say, can I sponsor? And they give their allowance for a dollar, two dollars, five dollars. We still have them. And as they've grown up, <coughs> uh, still supporting us as adults now. So just pray about it, if you would. And that's for the children's home, 100% that you give to New Life Children's Home goes for that. They do not pay us a salary. They do not give us for traveling or, 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 or any of that. All 100% just goes for the children's home to meet the needs of the kids. Now, I just wanted to share that with you, uh, and, and I appreciate Brother Carl's always so gracious to allow me to, to just uh, be able to share my heart with that. Now then, I want to preach to you. Is that all right? All right. Take your Bibles, if you will, and look with me this morning to Acts chapter 20. I think they'll put some of it on the screen here as well. Acts chapter 20. I was here this morning, Brother Carl. I said, what time's the service? 9 o'clock. He said, no, 8.30 for you. So, you know, he's afraid I'm on proving time, wasn't going to show up. But I showed up early. Now, there's only one thing I hate more than, than being late, and that's being early. But I was. <clears throat> I was. It was, it was a record. Nobody's going to ever believe it when I leave here, but I was actually here early. But anyway, uh, so I got here and just had some time, and more Lord just was speaking to my heart about some things that I added into my message. So my one-hour message is going to two and a half hours. I'm so excited. And uh, uh, some of you are like, oh, no, don't tell me. No, I'm just kidding. I will not do that. Especially it is this. Or we did, we did uh, 
It did, don't look at it like we lost an hour. Look at it like God brought us one hour closer to getting to church. Hey Amen. You didn't have to wait as long to get here. And that, isn't that awesome? Give God a hand, would you? Just, he brought you here early. Yeah. All right, Acts chapter 20. I'm going to read just a few verses, verses 6 down to verse 12. And I want you to listen to what happened. Interesting story here. And not a lot of folks preach on this because, well, you'll find out in a minute. But I'm going to. I want to just take a few verses and share with you uh, just a little bit out of these out of these passages of Scripture, and we'll pray. The Bible says in Acts chapter 20, verse 6, And we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, and came unto them to Troas in five days, where we abode seven days. And upon the first day of the week, <clears throat> when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech unto midnight. Can't much complain about a two-hour service if they preach past midnight. You know. And there were many lights in the upper room <clears throat> where they were gathered together. And there sat in a window a certain man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep. And fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him, embracing him, said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again and had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while, even to the break of day, so he departed. And they brought the young man alive and were not a little comforted. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the joy and the privilege of coming to your house. We know, Lord, that we are the church. This building does not, uh, it is not the church. It represents where we come and we gather and we open your word. We praise, we sing, we, we prepare our hearts, we open our hearts. And Lord, we know it's not the only day of the week that we want you to speak to us, but it's a time that we can come and we can just, Lord, somehow, Set things to the side, be teachable, and just focus on what you have for us. And Lord, would you take your scripture, would you take my feeble words, and Lord, would you give me the words to say, and Lord, would you help me to be able to preach what you want me to preach, but Lord, do what we cannot do, and that's speak to our hearts. Lord, just have your way in our hearts and our minds this morning. And Lord, I pray that if there's just, just e e even one person here today, even one mom or one dad or one teenager, or one adult, one grandpa, it doesn't matter, if, even if there's just one person, I pray that if they're not sure they're going to heaven, may they not leave this place lost. And may they come to know you as their personal Savior. And may those of us that do know you, Focus on you this morning and see, Lord, what's needed to be done in our life. Lest we find ourselves in a dangerous situation spiritually. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, listen, I said this before. You don't hear a lot of people preach, especially missionaries go around preaching and preach on Eutychus. Some people say, well, you know, he got his name because, you know, if you'd have fell three stories out of a window, you'd have cussed too. But Eutychus, the Bible says, he was sitting there, he goes into this room there, and Paul's coming, and he's preaching, and man, he's preaching a long time. You imagine all the folks, they knew that he was coming, he gets there, he's leaving the very next day, so they show up. They're not showing up to leave. They're not showing up to say, i got to get out an hour. They're showing up because they want to hear this man of God. And he may be preaching a long time, but they're there, and so the folks come in. The Bible says there were many candles, so that gives you the idea that we're up there. They didn't have the electricity, so they show up there with the candles. They're grouped together in this room, the Bible says Eutychus gets up and he perches himself up in this window and he falls out and he dies. Man, now listen to me. When you read those scriptures, those verses that we just read, not one verse says why he got in that window. Not one verse tells you and I exactly why he perched himself up in a dangerous situation that could cause him his life. But then as I think about it, did you know all through Scripture, the Bible really does teach us what could cause you and I to find ourselves in a dangerous situation spiritually? 
I mean, how often do we come in? And you know, the Bible speaks a lot about uh, using the term sleep as being stagnant, not moving. And I wonder, I wonder today how many can relate to some of the things that I'm about to mention to you. Some of the reasons that could have brought him to the place to perch himself up in that window in a dangerous situation. The first reason I believe the Bible teaches us that we could find ourselves up there is one word, uncommitted. You see, Eutychus was there that day, and obviously he was close enough to hear the preaching. Obviously, you can look at him maybe like a church member, somebody that comes to hear the preaching, and he does it out of a spiritual obligation. He shows up and he leaves. He was close enough to hear the preaching. He was close enough to hear the Word of God. But he was also in that window looking at what was going on out in the world. Maybe he just couldn't let go of what was out in the world. Maybe he just loved the outside so much that he couldn't get committed to God Almighty. Now, I don't know about you. I don't know where you are. You say, Brother Mike, where does it say that at? Where does it say anything about in commitment? Well, let me give you just a couple of verses. The Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 8, A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You see, Eutychus placed himself in a tragic situation. You say, what do you mean, Brother Mike? I'm saying if you're here today, and, and y'all need a yellow line right here, because if I step right there, I'm going. And I really want to step right there, but it's going to. But anyway, so, and that's a dangerous situation. Somebody commit to putting a line right there. So, so, but anyway, so, so here's what happens in our Christian life. We find ourselves, man, we get saved, we come to Christ, we trust Him with our future, but then we just can't let go of what's out in the world. Not enough to commit ourselves to Christ. And here's what happens. We find ourselves perched up in some window, some place that's dangerous, uncommitted. You say, Brother Mike, what's it going to cost me? You know, it could cost you a lot. It could cost you your very family. It could cost you your marriage. It could cost you your, your children. It could cost you your, your relationship with your church. It could cost you your relationship with the Lord. See, uncommitment is a dangerous place to be. So I wonder if you relate to that this morning. I wonder if when you came through this door and when you stop and examine your life, are you committed to God? Are you just like Eutychus? You know, you can look at him and say, what an idiot. Do you think that he really got up in that window and looked down and said, you know what? Man, if I doze off, I'm dead. I doubt he realized that he was in a dangerous situation. But I wonder how many people come in the church who know it's right to be committed to God Almighty. And you're living a double-minded life because your heart is really holding on to things out in the world, and you just can't get to that place to trust the Lord. And you know what he says? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Look at another one, Matthew 6, 24. No man, listen, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. But we sure do try, don't we, folks? Cross point, do we try? We try our best to serve both. We want to serve God on these days and ourselves on the other. Can I tell you, you can't teach your family to be faithful when you don't even go to church faithful yourself. You can't teach your children to give when you don't give. You can't teach folks in a world to love when you don't love. You can't, you can't live the double-minded life uncommitted to God. You've got to make your mind up. Hey, am I going to be committed to God or am I just going to play the part? Am I just going to go to church? Am I just going to look like a Christian but on the inside find myself in a dangerous situation? Uncommitment could have been the reason that brought him there. <clears throat> there was two boys years ago when I was in Atiquipa, Peru. We first went to Peru. That's where Brother Carl was referring to his first trip there. We used to, you'd fly into Lima, that's the capital city, and then fly uh, about an hour and a half flight up into Arequipa, up in the southern mountains in the Andes, further. It's about a 16-hour drive, but we had, the, the Catholicism is very strong. You say, Brother Mike, well, now don't you like Catholics? I love them with all my heart. But it doesn't matter if you're Catholic or Baptist or what you are, you don't get to heaven without Jesus. So there was these two young men that came to our church, and they got saved. And then soon we were going to have a baptism service, and they were ready to get baptized. And they went and told their parents they were going to get baptized in the church. And they said, you get baptized, 
you're kicked out of our family. But those two young men were so committed, and they came, and I said, listen, it's okay. Just, just be faithful to God. Be committed to him. And in time, your family will see a change in your life, and your change will affect them. And within a, maybe it took a long time, but months goes by, months go by, and within a year, those two boys got baptized, and their families were there to celebrate with them. Amen. God is good. But how many of us? are so committed to God that people can really see the change in our lives because we are committed to God. It may have been that Eutychus got up in that window that day because he was uncommitted. Let me give you another one. Maybe he was weary. Oh, man, I, I don't know about you, but this one touches my life. Maybe he had a lot going on. Maybe Eutychus was facing some trials, and maybe he was just drugged down, and maybe he was just ready to quit. I can tell you this, there's times your pastor wants to quit. I can tell you there's times Sister Kim just wants to throw in the towel. I'm not saying they do and they never have, but I'm telling you there's times where they really feel like it physically. And there's times that you do. There's times that I do. And I'm telling you, sometimes the trials of life can just go get us so weird. Maybe, maybe Eutychus was just not committed. He was in that window because he was up there. And let me give you the title of my message, by the way. Don't go to sleep like that. Maybe Eutychus got up in that window and fell asleep and it cost him life because he went to sleep uncommitted. Don't go to sleep like that, folks. Tonight, something we're all going to do. We're going to lay in our beds and we're going to go to sleep. Don't go to sleep like that. Don't go to sleep uncommitted. Maybe he was weary. Maybe he just had so much going on in his life that that night, as much as he wanted to be at church, as much as he wanted to hear the preacher, as much as his heart was to be there, maybe he was just wore down with all the problems and the valleys and the burdens and the trials in his life. Maybe there was cancer. Maybe there was heartache. Maybe where there was divorce. Maybe there was just disappointment or betrayal. Maybe all those things. Maybe the thing that you're carrying today is what he had on his heart. And he kind of got up in that windowsill and he was so weary that he drifted off and it costed him his life. Weariness can be a dangerous thing. <clears throat> That's why the Word of God tells us all through Scripture. Let me give you just a couple of verses here. Look at Galatians 6, 9. The Bible says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Maybe he was disappointed in some person. Maybe, maybe he was disappointed not trusting in God. Maybe, maybe he grew weary and maybe... You can identify with him because you came into church this morning and you're weary. Maybe some things have happened in your life, the circumstances and the trials, the health, the things that you face. It just doesn't seem fair. It doesn't seem right. And I'm not saying you're throwing a pity party. I'm just saying you're weary. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Maybe emotionally or spiritually or financially you've grown weary. Maybe temptation and you've grown weary. And you've lost some perspective. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 says this, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. How, Brother Mike, with a heartache that I carry, could I not grow weary? I'll tell you how. You don't focus on the circumstances. Rather, focus on the God that's with you. And I know that's not easy. I know it's not always easy. Simple to focus on the God, but God is a lot bigger than your circumstances and bigger than your trials. Listen, and I didn't give these to the guys, but Psalm 91 verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. Be encouraged. Don't go to sleep like that. 
don't find yourself somewhere where you ought not be spiritually today. And if you, if you find yourself there today, if that's you, maybe you're uncommitted. Don't go to sleep like that. Maybe you're weary. Don't go to sleep like that. Take it to God. Trust in God. Ask God to help you focus on Him, not the circumstances. Now, maybe it's uncommitment. Maybe it's weary. Let me give you another one. This may surprise some of you, but it's serving. So, Brother Mike, what's wrong with serving? Paul was leaving this next morning. They wanted to hear him preach. It's already past midnight. Maybe Eutychus just saw, a, maybe he saw a little widow come in at night, and he said, you know, I got the best seat in the house. Why don't I just go back here and help her? So he gets up, and he goes back, and he helps that little widow to come in and have the best seat. Now, maybe, maybe it's a gentleman that could barely walk, and he come, and he helped him, and he gave him a seat. Maybe he saw something that needed to be done, and he gave a seat. Maybe he was there ushering. Maybe he was just serving. You say, Brother Mike, what's wrong with serving? Nothing unless your service has taken the place of your worship. Man, I see this a lot, and I've been there. I've been there in my own life. Man, on the mission field, over there serving. I'm away from my friends, away from my own language. I'm away from my own culture. I'm there. I'm having to eat things I don't want to eat. I'm having to smell things I don't want to smell. I, I, I'm, having to, I'm having to be so far away from, from you guys, and sometimes it gets lonely. And, 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 and I'm going to be honest with you, just like Eutychus, listen, maybe he got there because he's uncommitted. Don't go to sleep like that. Maybe he was weary. Don't go to sleep like that, not spiritually. Listen, maybe he was serving, and his service replaced his worship. And I know what it's like to be on the mission field and look out and see kids coming up begging at your car that are two, three, four years old. You said two years I say two years on the street by themselves all the time. There's 14 million people living more and more than that now because you've got all the Venezuelans that come in. We have, we have a lot of people in Lima alone. And sometimes, you know what, folks? <clears throat> There's times that I'm serving, but I'm not worshiping. It's not about your hand worship, but your heart worship. Maybe you can come in and you can sing the songs that we were singing just a moment ago. I can't even remember one of the songs, but one of them, it's, I was thinking about it, I can't remember the name of it. But, but we come in and we sing these songs, and they sound so beautiful. I mean, it, it, it's the way we would really like it to be but it's not the way it is. And maybe Eutychus that day, he was doing the right thing, but his heart wasn't where it ought to be. So as he was serving, he goes back there, and he perches himself up in that window, and he falls out, falls asleep, falls out the window, and costs him his life. Maybe it's uncommitment. Maybe, may, may, maybe it's, uh, it's weariness. Maybe it's, it's serving, but yet his servant, the act of serving isn't the problem. Unless it places your worship. Maybe he permitted his service to replace that. Maybe you struggle here. Maybe you're a teacher. Maybe you're a singer. Maybe you help others. Maybe you're in the wrong relationship. Maybe, maybe you're, you're finding yourself trying to help somebody. Maybe, maybe you're singing the band. Maybe you preach. Maybe you teach. Maybe you have a small group. Maybe you're doing all these things. Yet your, your, your service has replaced your worship, and it's not there in your heart anymore. And if you relate to this, can I say, may I encourage you today, don't go to sleep like this. I'll show you two more, and I'll quit. The next one is careless. Man, this is a big one. Let me show you what the Bible says. Look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. The Bible says this. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. You know, the Bible tells in John 10, 10, that the thief cometh but for to steal and to kill and destroy. I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Maybe you've gotten to the place that you're careless. Now, I'm not one to go around preaching and harping on sin and doing this, because... You know, 
to him that doeth to do to him that knoweth to do good and doeth doeth it not to him it is sin the bible says so i don't know where you are i don't know what sins i will say that we all have sin in our life that we can't overcome that that's a fact you may not believe that but there are there is a sin that you cannot overcome on your own but you can overcome it with the help of jesus and so often we're trying to overcome our sin instead of letting Jesus help us overcome the sin because you don't have the strength to do it in yourself. But maybe you have just gotten careless and you've allowed things to come into your life and you sit here this morning and this is where you relate to. Maybe you, you want to be committed to God and maybe, maybe you're not even feeling weary and life is hunky-dory for you and you don't have the problems. Man, let me tell you what I see in Peru. I bring in kids that little babies that have been raped by their dads and their uncles. I bring in girls that their mother has sold their body to men for a dollar to make money off of. We see guys, boys that have been taken away because they've been abandoned or orphaned and they put those boys into a holding tank with other boys where they have been molested. I see all kind of garbage. And you know what? You got to come to the place where you tell that young man that God has a purpose and a plan even for the heartache, even for the trial, even through the garbage you had to go through in life. Not to be bitter, but trust in God. That's not as easy as it sounds, is it? No. You know, you, some of you have been through some of that stuff. I know what it's like to be abandoned. I know what it's like to have my dad leave me when I was seven years old. And somehow I had to find the good in that. Well, yeah, because God was preparing my heart to start a children's home on a mission field. Man, I would have never saw that going through that as a kid or as a teenager. It was hard enough as a young adult. But maybe you have grown careless in your spiritual walk with the Lord and you have allowed sin to come into your life. And maybe that night Eutychus had been living the life to where, yeah, I'll show up, I'll be at church, I'll stay past midnight, but my heart is somewhere else. Maybe he had something else in his heart. Maybe he had grown careless. Maybe he had forgotten. Listen, just because you had victory over sin one time doesn't mean the devil's not going to come back and attack you again, amen? You can give and give, you can go and go, and you can serve and serve, and you can love and love, and you can be faithful and be faithful, but you say, well, praise God, God's given me victory over this sin, and you know what? The devil's going to come right back and attack you again and again and again. Be sober, be vigilant, because that you have an enemy, the devil, who is trying his best to just mess up your home, mess up your life, mess up your testimony, mess up this church, doing all that he can. So it may be that night that he was just careless. I mean, like I said earlier, I, I, I don't think that Eutychus got up and sat in that windowsill and said, oh man, I could fall and kill myself. You know what I think? I think he got up there and he was careless. Christian, if your relationship with the Lord isn't what it ought to be, Maybe there's sin in your life. Maybe there's some things that you need to repent of. Maybe there's some bitterness. Hey, God's bigger than that bitterness. God's bigger, bigger than that betrayal. He's bigger than that hurt. He's bigger, as I tell these kids and our children, he's bigger than, than the abuse. He's bigger than, than, than the treatment you received. He's bigger than the heartache you have. He's greater than all that. And he can give you victory from all that. He's, he's greater than that drug addiction you have. He, God is greater than that, that addiction to pornography that you have, if you have it. May, he's bigger than that hurt that you went through. He's bigger than that disease that you carry. He's bigger than all that. And God says, hey, don't be careless. Don't go to sleep like that. And I'll give you my last one. The last one, because I could preach all this, but I would do an injustice if I did not give this verse and I did not share this one. Maybe he was unaware. Maybe he had no idea what was really about to happen to him. Maybe he didn't know the danger was really there. Let me give you a scripture for this. John 3.18 says this, and listen here. He that believeth on him is not condemned means you put your trust in Jesus, you're no longer condemned. 
But listen to the key part of this, uh, the other key part of this. It says, but he that believeth not is condemned already. If you walked into here and you put your trust in Jesus, you're no longer condemned. You once were, but you no longer am condemned. I once was on my way to hell, whether I liked it or not, until I put my trust in Jesus. I was headed for hell, just like everyone in this room. Listen to me. Without Christ, we are headed to hell. But the Bible says, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he that hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. Listen, if you haven't put your trust in Jesus, you may be unaware of it. So therefore, I want to share with you this morning, if you don't have Jesus in your heart as your Savior, it's not Pastor Carl's words or Brother Mike's words or any of these other folks. It's the Word of God. The Bible says, he that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not eternal life. Without Jesus, you can't go to heaven. You know what I have to say for you for that? Don't go to sleep like that. Don't lay your head on your pillow not knowing where you're going to spend eternity. You say, Brother Mike, but I I, I don't, I used to witness to a guy when I was in Bible college down in Jacksonville, Florida. I used to go, and I I would go down to the uh, rescue mission. That's where we used to go down and, and preach at. So I'd go down there. And, and, and we would we'd sit around, and the folks would come in that were homeless, and they'd come in. And that's one of my funnest favorite times. I'd go down there and just get to preach to them, because in my heart, I knew they couldn't do anything for me. It was about me giving to them. And I saw people that were heartache, and I saw them that were broken. And I remember a guy named Thomas. For some reason, God's never let me forget Thomas. But I used to tell Thomas, <clears throat> I used to tell Thomas, Thomas, Jesus really wants to save you. And I would share Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be saved, Thomas. Thomas was an, a man, a grown man. He was older than I was. And um, homeless, on the street. Had got messed up in drugs, lost his marriage. His children didn't talk to him. Just a lot of heartache. Thomas was a really nice guy, and I loved talking to him. But whenever I would go down there, he was always down there. And I witnessed to him, and I witnessed to him, and he always said this to me. He said, you know, Brother Mike, he said, once I get things cleaned up, he said, I'm going to ask Jesus to come into my heart and save me. I said, but Thomas, that's not how you do it. You ask Jesus to come into your heart so he can clean you up. And as far as I know, Thomas never got saved, and I've never forgotten him. And as I stand or sit in front of a congregation like this, I wonder, is there a Thomas in the crowd? I wonder if there's somebody there that's saying, you know, when I get things straightened out or when I do this, I'm going to go to Christ. I'm going to give my life to Christ. Why? You'll never be clean enough. And God doesn't want you to be clean enough. He wants you to love him and to trust him. He can clean you up. Let him forgive you. Say, Brother Mike, you don't know what all I've done. No, I don't, and I don't care. God loves you, and he wants you just the way you are so he can save you, he can forgive you, and he can clean you up. Maybe Eutychus was sitting up there that day because he was uncommitted. My question for you as I close here, and y'all know I like closing like 30 times, so this could still take another hour. I'm just kidding. (laughs) I'm really closing. Listen. Maybe you came in the doors this morning, and maybe if the truth be told, if you were really transparent this morning and really honest, you'd say, Brother Mike, it's me that's not committed. I'm halfway in. I'm at church. They can come on out. We're going to get ready to have our invitation. But maybe it's you that walked in today. And the truth is, God just wants to tug at your heart and say, commit yourself to me. Don't just live for me half-hearted. Commit yourself to me. And maybe you relate to Eutychus, and maybe you're finding yourself today in a dangerous situation. Before it costs you something, commit your life to God. Just tell him, Christian, this morning, you want to be committed to him. Maybe you came in this place this morning and you're weary. It happens to all of us at some time. That's why scripture's in the Bible to tell us about growing weary. (laughs) But listen, maybe what you needed to hear today is what you need to do is not focus on your circumstances, but 
focus, but focus on God who is your refuge. So maybe this morning, God's touched your heart because you're weary and you're just ready to fall out of that window sill. So I see so many people in my lifetime on fire for God one minute and yet not even going to church or serving God now. They just grew weary. Maybe you're the person that's serving. Maybe you're the one that's doing the things in the church. But that service has replaced your worship. It no longer is it deep down in your heart anymore. Now it's just a routine. Oh, you enjoy knowing that what you're doing is for a greater cause and it's to help others. But inside, you need to help. Maybe God spoke to your heart this morning because your service has replaced your worship. Maybe today, listen, maybe you have just... uh, become careless you're living in a way you ought not live you allow things into your life you ought, listen we're human we allow things to do that and we need to be reminded every now and then hey am I living careless because there's a real devil out there that's trying his best to attack me to defeat me to discourage me don't go to sleep like that maybe you're here this morning And I know there's a great uh, majority of this crowd that knows Jesus as their Savior. Matter of fact, if you know Jesus as your personal Savior, just lift your hand up and put it down. Why don't you put it down? Now, for those of you that are here, you see that? A good majority of folks here have put their trust in Jesus. I didn't say if you believe there was a God. I said those that know Jesus as their personal Savior. A good majority do. I'm just saying to you this morning, maybe you're the one that's here that you couldn't raise your hand. Maybe you're the one that needs to hear that Jesus loves you and he'll forgive you and he cares about you. Don't sit there and listen to the lies of the devil like Thomas did that one day I'll be clean enough. One day I'll be good enough and God will accept me. No, God will accept you right now this morning. He loves you so much that He gave His only begotten Son to die for you so that one day you can hear the gospel and put your trust in Him and come to know Him personally and walk with Him and serve Him and have a relationship with Him like no other thing in this world could ever offer you. No other peace, no other joy. And maybe you sit here this morning and you're not like the ones that could raise their hand. You're not the one that could say, I know Him, Brother Mike, I know Him. You can this morning. Don't go to sleep like that. Would you bow your head with me, please? Just in a quick way of invitation. If God spoke to your heart this morning about something, I just want to pray for you. I'm not going to embarrass you or anything. I just want to look around. I just want to pray for you. You say, Brother Mike, God spoke to my heart about something. Maybe maybe it was being committed. Maybe it was being weary, Brother Mike. Maybe, maybe I, I've traded my, uh, I'm doing the service, but it, it's, it's not worship anymore. And Brother Mike, I've been careless. Brother Mike, I'm lost and I'm unaware of what was going to really happen to me. You see, you say, Brother Mike, why go to Peru, South America, and tell people when people need everything here and we need children's home here? I'll tell you why. Because somebody over there doesn't know they're on their way to hell. And maybe that's you. And you say, Brother Mike, God spoke to my heart this morning. Pray for me. Would you just lift it up and put it down? Hands all over. Thank you so much. Thank you. I wonder this morning, is there a lost person here that says, Brother Mike, I was unaware. I'm going to be honest with you. If I die, Brother Mike, today, I'm not sure I'd go to heaven. Would you pray for me? Is there anybody like that? Would you raise your hand? Brother Mike, I need to trust Jesus and ask him to be my Savior and forgive me for my sins. Would you raise your hand? Just raise it. Let me see it. I just want to pray for you. I'm not going to embarrass you. Anybody? Just say, Brother, I see that hand. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's folks rejoicing. And I can tell you the the angels in heaven are too. Anybody else say, Brother Mike, I'm lost. If I die today, I do not know where I'd go. I don't know that I would go to heaven. And I want to. I want to know Jesus as my Savior. Would you raise your hand? Anybody else? Anybody else? I see that hand. I see that hand. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else? Raise it so I can see it. I just want to pray for you. Anybody else? Brother Mike, pray for me. 
I want to ask Jesus into my heart this morning. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm ready, Brother Mike. I want to ask Christ to forgive me for my sins and to be my Savior. Raise your hand. Let me see it. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right. Now I want to tell those two that raised your hand. You can be saved right in your seat. You don't have to come down here. You don't have to even make it public. You can do it in your heart. You can just go to Christ and say, Dear Lord, I repent of my sins. I know I'm a sinner. And I believe that you died for me and you rose again. And I ask you to come into my heart and to be my Savior and save me. Now saying that, let me say this. You have a church here that cares about you. In just a moment, I'm going to give an invitation. We're going to stand and folks around this altar that raise your hand that said that God spoke to their heart or maybe they're going to pray for someone else. They're going to come around this altar and pray if they want to. And I want to encourage you. Pastor Carl is going to come. Let somebody know. They have a gift for you. But they can answer any questions. They can pray with you, whatever you need. Church, today's a good day. If you allow God to speak to your heart and you obey Him. Would you stand to your feet with me? Pastor Carl, you come. All right, let's all bow your heads. Father, we thank you for bringing Mike here today to send your word to us. And Lord, I know your spirit is in this place. And God, we know that you're molding us and teaching us and taking us to a place that you want us to go. But now may we just be obedient to what we've heard and to what you're telling us individually. Lord, I pray for any individual that's here that's not saved, that today will be the day of salvation for them, and they'll call out to you. And your word says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, here in just a moment they're going to sing a song. The altar is open. What are you going to do with what you've heard? I think that's a message that applies to all of us. Pray, pray for someone else. This altar will be open. But I do want to do one more thing. There are several of you here that don't know Christ. And I want you right now to call out to Him. If you haven't already done that, just call out to Him and ask Him to forgive you of your sins. The Bible says He is faithful and just. If you'll ask for forgiveness... He'll wash all your sins away and you'll be a new person in Christ. The Holy Spirit will come and dwell and live in your, your with you and guide you and show you the way that God wants you to go. If that's you, you say, well, what do I do? What do, I do? There's no magic words. There's no magic prayer. It's in your heart. You give it to Him. I'm going to pray a prayer if you just pray something like this and call out to Him. Today can be the day of salvation for you. Today is the day. Right now, Satan's trying to tell you to get out this door and don't do it. But the Holy Spirit is saying God loves you and he cares about you. So call out to him right now, whether you raised your hand earlier or not. If you don't know Christ, if you're watching behind a computer screen and you don't know Christ, now is the time. Pray something like this. Dear Lord Jesus, I need you in my life. Please forgive me of my sin. I turn from my old life and now I follow you. I believe you died for me. God, I believe you raised him from the dead. And now he's a risen Savior. I, I surrender to you. I surrender to you. Okay, if you prayed something like that, today is the day. Write that date down. I'm telling you, this is your new start in a life with Christ. And nobody can ever take that away from you. Nobody can take it away from you. He's going to guide you and lead you. You say, Pastor Carl, that was me today. Today, I believe I'm here because I need a relationship with Jesus, and I ask him into my life. Heads are bowed, my eyes are closed. No one's looking around. Can we celebrate with you? We'd love to know that you made this decision today. I want you to slip your hand up right now. I'm not going to embarrass you, call you. I just slip it up and say, I received Christ into my life, Pastor Carl. That was me today. That's you. Just slip it up real high. Thank you for that one right there. Somebody else. Somebody else. Maybe you're behind a computer screen. We can't see you. We don't know who you are, but God, we know that, uh, that decisions were made here today. And Lord, we rejoice. We have come to hear from you and we have heard from you. And right now, Lord, we exalt you. And now, Lord, we apply it to our life. And Lord, may we commit to you and not fall asleep. Father, we love you and praise you. As we worship during this last song, we rejoice in decisions made. And this altar, may it be filled, God, with people just pouring their heart out to you in a way of worship and forgiveness. In Christ's name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen.